Live from Detroit, Michigan, USA. In my house, hosted by T. Carlita. Where the true stories are told and great music is played. Welcome to another episode of the In My House Technology <laughs> Show. I am your host, T. Carlita, and we are, we're still staying COVID compliant. We're still connecting the best way that we can. And it actually, Zoom is working out pretty good because I get a chance to talk to people out of the state. I get to talk to people out of the country. So, you know, hey, we do what we got to do. So on today's show, I'm bringing you DJ Todd, the Sandman from Toledo, but he really is from Michigan because he stay in Detroit more than he stay in Toledo, if you ask me. Plus, we were out the house for a few minutes. I want to bring you some highlights from the Motown pop-up shop. So it's called Motown in Greek Town. So I'm going to show you that as well. But for now, let me stop sneezing. But for Bless now, you. let me just give you a little taste of DJ Sandman when I gave him an artist that he had never heard of. Shout out to Russ Gabriel for making that banging, banging, banging music for us. Made it kind of easy. So let me give you a quick teaser. And as soon as we watch this quick teaser of Sandman doing his Facebook Live Russ Gabriel theme, we're going to come right back and chit chat with DJ Sandman. This is T. Carlita. Check this guy out. He's pretty hot. It's your boy again. This time for tonight. This artist series mix goes out to Tina Nelson. She came up with some names for some artist series mixes to do. And it's by a cat who I was very unfamiliar with. He goes by the name of Russ Gabriel. I listened to his music very briefly. I like some of his tracks. Well, I can I kind of like all of his tracks. So I've never barely listened to these tracks. I've never played these tracks. I really know nothing about these tracks. So we're just going to get busy, kind of get creative, see what happens. What's up, James? And uh, we'll just see how it goes. Artist series, Russ Gabriel, begins now.
You are in my house, hosted by T. Carlita, where the true stories are told and great music is played. Welcome, Judge Mathis. Thanks for coming to share an important message with the Wayne County taxpayers. Well, thank you for allowing me to help. You know, most of my life I was a resident of Wayne County, and so I'm here to help because Treasurer Shabri wants to work with Wayne County homeowners to keep families in their homes and prevent foreclosure. If you're having trouble making your property tax payments, let us know. We have many resources to help. Already in the payment plan, it's important you stay in good standing. Making property tax payments is now easier than ever. We have placed payment kiosks and community centers across the county. We've also added kiosks in our offices. Contact us at 313-224-5990 or email us at taxinfo at waynecounty.com. And remember, stay safe, save time, make your appointments and payments online. In My House Radio, online 24-7. Featuring only the best techno and house music. And be sure to tune in for Sunday Inspiration. Every Sunday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Get connected. www.inmyhouse65.com Sandman, who call you Sandman, DJ Sandman, how are you? And welcome to In My House. Thank you for having me. The virtual edition, of course. <laughs> One day you got to come and get on the turntables, though. I know, I know. One day you got to get on the turntables. Soon, no, hopefully, I'm... hopefully soon. We'll, it's, we'll been see. A it's been a while since I've been on tables, too. Oh, man. You know, I got the vinyl. You just dig through there and pick a few records and we're going to call it a day. Bring your own needles. No, I'm just kidding. I got those too. So anyway, <laughs> how are you first and foremost? Thank you very much for taking time out your busy schedule to hang out with me virtually. I am good. I am good. I couldn't, couldn't ask for better days at the moment. That's right. So listen, you are pretty artistic and a lot of your videos, um, you did some pretty cool stuff through the pandemic. Your lives, I really got a kick out of your lives. I got a kick out of your artistry series that Gus, Russ Gabriel. So let me let me just pop this in my head here. So when I gave you the call, I said, ooh, I got an artist for you, Russ Gabriel. What's the first thing you said? Did you say, oh, sh no, I'm just kidding. What did you say in your well, mind? The, the first thing I said in my mind is I have no idea who that is. Like, at all. I've never heard him, never heard his music, never heard nothing. And if I did, I don't even recall at all. Okay. You know, so so when you brought that up, I'm like, I'm like, okay, here's somebody I've never heard of. And then my next thought was, well, I hope they have a bunch of material so that way I can, you know, meander through their works and you know play the stuff the best of my ability and that. And sure enough, he had a ton of material. So I was happy. He's good too. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Yeah, and all all kind of all over the place and real versatile from real deep to real techie to you know some different flavors in between. Yeah, I was yeah. digging it. Yeah. So let's talk about your uh musical DJ journey. So when did you first find out that hey, when I grow up, I want to be a DJ? Um, it was really kind of friends back in the 80s taking me to uh, different bars and clubs that I really wasn't even old enough to uh, be in, but I was getting in. Okay. <laughs> All right. Illegally, of course, but uh -huh. I mean, uh, you know, back then or those times, it was a lot e easier to kind of do that because, you know, they didn't sometimes didn't care how old you were. They just wanted your money. Right, true. And if true. somebody knew the right person, well, you were in anyways. So, and then it was, uh, it was in the 80s. I went to, uh, these friends of mine took me to the Necto. But it, back, way back when, it was just straight up the Nectarine Ballroom. And they used to have guest DJs come in in the main room. And while the DJ was playing, would have videos come down on this screen 
And this one particular night, there was a UK guy in there and he was playing all these UK tracks and then there was videos for the tracks, you know, because MTV and stuff was big at that time. So, you know, obviously videos for everything was, was in for the moment. And I just was like, you know, I got hip to all this like UK music at that time. And man, right from then, uh, then the one, the one guy who took me out to the bar, he had a couple of, uh, I think it was just a couple of uh, belt-driven rack mount turntables from the old rack mount systems. Oh, okay. And had two of those and just, you know, like like a lot of the old jocks, you know, had the, the what was it, the Craco or Realistic uh, four-channel or something mixer from uh, Radio Shack. Oh, boy. You know, and I think he had like maybe 10, 15 records. Uh-huh. And then he just started... You know, basically just throwing records on and slamming them back and forth. Wow. Wow. So that's let's talk about, started. that's how it happened. So, yeah. so you, do you do the, you do the, the Wesley's, is that correct? Wesley's in Toledo. Are you part of that? Yeah. Okay. So how did that come about? Cause I know a lot of guys would always be like, we're going to Toledo. We're going to, that's how I found out about you. Cause a lot of the guys were saying, well, we're going to down to Toledo. I'm like, what's in Toledo? And it's like this bomb club, Wesley's. So that's you. So how? what's going on with Wesley's? How'd that come about? Uh, Wesley's came about because in the beginning, um, I was doing, uh, when I first started there in, what was it, 2000, I think it was either 2004 or 2000, I think it was maybe 2005. Or may, yeah, I, I don't know. It's been so long. It was right around there that time. And then uh, I was doing like an electronic night starting out, which, you know, back then really, I don't know, Toledo scene was very different at that time. So we tried for like, it was like a year doing electronic and it didn't, what wasn't really panning out. So these other friends of mine down the street at this other bar they had uh, kind of like a, an old school kind of hip hop night going on. But for some reason or another, they got let go from their bar. And then we three met up and we were like, why don't we, why don't we do a night? And then we just were like, well, what are we going to call it? We're going to do, what are we going to do? And they're like, why don't we just call it old school Fridays and we play everything old school? Like everything and anything under the sun that was old school. Mm-hmm. So we uh, tried it out for, uh, you know, it was like the first six months. It was like in November, I think, of two, 2006. Or, may, or maybe it was November, I'm sorry, November of 2005. And uh, it wasn't until July of 2006, that summer, for that weekend, I don't know what it was or why, but until that point, we were kind of like up and down with the night. Mm -hmm. And then once that weekend hit, from that weekend on, post-date now, 15 years later, the night has been slammed every single Friday night for all all of these 15 years. And because of the 15 years, we are now Toledo's longest running theme night in Toledo history. Wow, uh, that's awesome. That's great. And so now that when COVID hit, you guys had to kind of like close and do that. So are, yeah. have, you been, have you been able to slowly reopen? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we started, I mean, you know, it, it, it was what, 16, 17 months that the bar was closed. Yeah. And then we just opened late summer. Okay. And, you know, and <laughs> since we've been back, it was like we never left. Wow, they was ready, huh? Yeah, they were ready. It was it was packed and busy as, as ever. But even during COVID, I still did, uh, you know, some uh, some old school Fridays, like online events. Right. Just to, just to keep people interested so that they, you know, they weren't oh. completely disconnected from the night itself. That's great. You are in my house. Hosted by T. Carlita, where the true stories are told and great music is played. We are currently right here in the heart of Detroit City. 
Greek town in the heart of downtown where all the action takes place. And here is a lovely young lady coming up. You must be coming back from your little break. And I've been knowing her since she was a little girl too. Tell us who you are. Hi, my name is Karen Kimbon. I currently am a sales associate at the Motown Museum store. Yay! And let's show you the pop-up. So they had to kind of like leave the boulevard while they're doing these grand renovations. And I'm gonna take you all inside. But let's talk to this guy right here. He is securing the place. Who are you, sir? My name is Sekou Hampton, part of the Hampton Security, and we welcome you down to Motown in Greek Town. Come oh. on down. All right, y'all come on down. So let me take y'all in and um, just see what y'all got going on here. Look at that. This is the pop-up shop, huh? With all the fun Motown things. Look at all that. Isn't this amazing? You know, Detroit is creative. We do what we do. So creative. Wherever we need to go, we get it done, right? So this is the pop-up shop here to give you a chance to see what it looks like. And let's meet this lady right here. This is boss forever. I'm Sheila Spencer, the general manager for Motown Museum and also the retail operations as well. So we're down here at Motown and Greek Town opening up our new store location that's temporary as we do our construction. We're going into an amazing place um, at the museum. So what a better partnership is to come down and continue to bring that experience of Motown in Greek Town along with some amazing merchandise. So make sure you guys come down and get some experience with us. So will this be the location until the expansion is complete? So when you leave here, the expansion is gonna be done? Part of the expansion. Okay. So the construction, should I say, not necessarily the full expansion, but part of the construction will be done and we'll be back in May of 2022. Um, but in the meantime, we're gonna be rocking it out right down here in Greektown. Okay, y'all heard it here first. Let <laughs> Come me, visit us. Y'all get down here. So what are the hours? The hours right now is uh, Wednesday through Saturday, uh, 10 to five. Okay. But keep note, it may change. All right, awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, we're out. You are in my house, hosted by T. Carlita, where the true stories are told and great music is played. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabri, encouraging all taxpayers to please take advantage of the several payment options available. If you have to visit our office in person, you must make an appointment by going to treasurer.waynecounty.com. It only takes a few minutes. Facial covering or mask is required and social distancing is observed. You can also email our office at taxinfo at waynecounty.com or call us at 313-224-5990. In My House Radio, online 24-7. Featuring only the best techno and house music. And be sure to tune in for Sunday Inspiration. Every Sunday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Get connected. www.inmyhouse65.com So growing up with music and you being in Toledo, Toledo and Detroit, they kind of like go together almost, except for football, but that's a whole nother story. Um, <laughs> we won't go there. But it was like little Detroit. Yeah, it is. So tell me, well, who were some of the like you idolized? Who who inspired you? Who did you like be, were in awe growing up? You know, what DJs or musicians or artists really you was like, yeah, that's 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 it. Or they're it. You know, honestly, there really wasn't really any one artist sort of in particular, because when I first started out, I just took any anybody that I heard, uh, any, you know, mix that was coming off of the CD or the uh, DJ magazines at the time, you know, you'd always get the free mix. Anything that I would listen to, what I, I would all take in. But there, the first, first DJ that ever took you know, a severe liking to, which 
sort of helped me define the way I do things now. And that was uh, when I first heard uh, Doc Martin's Unlock Your Mind mixtape. Okay. And that just like changed everything for me. Wow, that's what's happening. So why did you, what did you do to pacify your time with code? You shut down, you can't go to work, you can't run the bar. So how'd you keep your mentals in check? To keep my mental, I started doing live streams. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> and they got really creative. So can you tell me about how you just put in those graphics, the one you lit yourself on fire and like, wow. Well, you know, those, those thankfully, thankfully, those were all Facebook filters from the lives. That's you know, it's just most people when they do a live, they don't use any filters. They don't do anything like anything like that. But there's a whole a whole slew of filters that you, you can use. And I try to I try to use like the most interesting sort of ones that would capture somebody's attention as it just, you know, I'm blurry or I've got dots around me or, I've got, you know, right. Try to always try and do something kind of cool that you surely did. So real quickly, before we get out of here. What would you say to an up and coming, inspiring DJ? What would some advice be? Because like right now, everybody just thinks that I got a computer, I got this, I can DJ. What would you say to somebody who's just like, I can DJ, I'm ready? Well, because anybody who ever thinks first and foremost that they can DJ, they're already wrong. <laughs> because there's so much you have to learn. You need to, you need to research your history. You need to re, you know, do your history on the roots where where things came from where it's going where where you know how things are now and when you're starting out djing just yourself i mean you gotta you know you, you can't just think you're gonna have some control or even though it has all the you know basically helps you you know kind of cheat and do everything else but you still have to practice 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 even though it your your whatever you even may use turntables controllers cdjs everything is in front of you you have to still learn all of that stuff to get well at it. Right. If you just think you're just going to go into it right away, you're going to be horrible. Just like, just like we all were, like I was way, uh, you know, the Belleville three were we at one time as DJs, we all sucked. Yeah. We weren't yeah. great in the beginning, but we became great over time by learning. Yeah. And if you try and skip a lot of that process, I mean, it's kind of pointless. Wow. So Sam, man, tell me, give me the address to Wesley's. Cause like I said, Detroit, Toledo, we're just a quick drive away. So yeah, what, is, like what, is your, what is, what is, what is the name of your night and where are you located? The name of the night is old school Fridays and it's at Wesley's bar, which is 1201 Adams street, Toledo, Ohio, 43604. And what's your hours? And the hours are 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. It's free cover. There's no cover to get in. It's a cool atmosphere. I mean, you get everybody under the sun from 20, 21 to 65 in there. And every, you, I mean, we've, we've had, I mean, I mean, I got to lie. I mean, there's been times where, it's, you know, we've, we've had, you know, some real type hood groups come in. And then we've had like bikers come in. And then we've had wedding parties come in and all these people are in this in, in at the same time, all cohesively getting along like nobody's different from one another. Right. That's what's that's music, right? So and that's the vibe of Wesley's. That's awesome. Well, I I'm looking forward to getting down there one day and hang out. So I'll, I'll be there in the spring. I'm, I'm almost on, I don't travel in this, you know, I'm getting, we get close to winter. So I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I play it safe, but you're not that far. So I definitely well, get down there. We've got four, four patio Fridays left for patio season. And then oh, I really? think, yes. So, and then I think we're going to do some like one-offs through the winter, but I don't know what the dates are on that, but yeah, there's, there's, still four fridays left this month to come check it out so you still have you so basically for the okay i'm vaccinated but i'm still not good on indoor spots so much so yeah, you, you have a patio vaccine. you have a patio piece too yep. mm -hmm. oh all yep. right y'all heard that we got four patios left y'all y'all need to get on down there and hit that freeway it ain't that far it's just right down the street 
Just don't not. drink because you might have to get a hotel down. You got is there hotels down the street in case somebody yep. can't make it back? <laughs> yep, within five minutes. Oh man. So you already said. All right, yeah. Sandman, you know what? You are the man. Now, one more thing before I let you go for real this time. I sound like the preacher. One more time. One more <laughs> before I close it's out. All good. It's all good. So I need to talk about this art and your cartoons, your graphics. Where did that part of you come from? You know, it, it came from from starting doing the uh, the old school Fridays flyers. Oh, okay. I didn't want to I didn't want to pay anybody to to do the art because I figured I could learn it by myself. And then once I started doing the art, I tried to make all the flyers under one principle. And that one principle is less is more. Okay. So the really, the really the hardest part about the whole process is really finding the right images. Okay. Because some, you know, aside from the stuff that I create myself, I, I you know, use other Im images and stuff from other things, you know, that are, uh, you know, out there across the, you know, the interwebs and stuff for everyone to use. Right. But I try to use, stay, stay away from things that most people use and use the stuff that no one would use mm -hmm. and then try to do something interesting with it. Wow. They're, fr they're really cool, too. I, I get a kick out of watching your flyers. I think my favorite character though is the dude with the glasses. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, the the logo with or yeah. the, the logo with the glasses. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty that cool. actually came from uh, graffiti artist Super Caliph. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. That's what's up. I think I got one of your couple of your stickers on my door too. I have that's funny though. One. I have, I have new some... ones for you. Oh, good. Because as a matter of fact, I did have a sticker and I had no clue who you were. I think, um, I don't know, at one of my two turntables and a mixer thing, a couple of the DJs would bring stickers. You know, we bring stickers to pass them around. And I did see your uh, sticker. And so I got them stuck on my door. So I was like, yeah. I know that guy. And then as I got to get to know, and I didn't even know who you were then. And then right. I said, I got his sticker on my door. I'm like, okay, he's pretty cool. <laughs> no, you are right. You are right. You are right. Well, good luck with you on your, uh, you know, for the DJing, the club nights, um, four more patio nights. All right. I got to keep That's that. Right. You got to keep that in mind. But um, until next time, thank you so much, Sandman. Keep up the good work. And I, I truly, truly enjoyed your Facebook lives that kept us all sane through the pandemic. I mean, Facebook gave us all hell. I know. <laughs> you know what? I have to say, from when I started doing the lives, I have to say, from 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 when I first started till now, I have been extremely lucky to never have been booted very much from doing the live stream. <laughs> they was they be on it, man. Yeah, so many people were unfortunate, and I was just. The way I just kind of figured it out is if I stick to like independent label stuff and stuff that's not super big, but still is, you know, it's, you know, it's music that's showing up in the top 100 charts and stuff like that, but still m might not be well known yet or may, may not necessarily be on that huge label and right. just try to stick to that or, or like even doing, you know, the artist series, you know, nine times out of 10 when I do the artist series, I, I hardly ever have a problem. Right. Right, right. Because they're you, so, and you just, you pick some, I mean, you pick some really cool artists and you introduced everyone to artists that way because it was a lot that people had never heard of. And the way you weave the music in, it was like, oh yeah. That, well, that's see, that's good. the thing, you know, all these artists, you know, for, you know, some of the artists, you know, have been in the industry the last 20, 30, 40 years and stuff, you know, they have these huge catalogs of music. Yeah. But yet, as DJs, when we, when we play out, you know, or play a festival, club, bar, lounge, whatever, you know, we may play only one track by said artist yep. in our set. Yep. And it's like some of these artists have so many just hot, killer, banging ass tracks. Yeah. Why not use more? Or why not do a whole set of their tracks? Right, right. You know, that's the one thing that I did like about, uh, like for me personally, like, I'm not nowhere near the DJ like you guys. But what I do like, 
when I would do the uh, Facebook lives and do the vinyl, what I really like too, you actually let people hear the song because you, the thing is when you go to the club, yeah, you're right. You're going to hear that same one song by that artist, by every DJ at every club. It's the same song. So yeah. now you're playing something different, but you even have a way to play it almost down to the end because you ever notice when you're at a club because you guys are putting stuff in the pocket, you're not making train wrecks. Right. So sometimes the end of the song doesn't fit the way you need to mix, but it's the right. end of the song. There's so many end of the song that last two minutes on that end that never gets played. That's, that's right, because most DJs are only playing like the first three or four minutes of the track and then they're out. Yeah, they're out of it real fast. But man, if you just scoot that needle up to the two minutes from the back end, it's some bad stuff right there on the tail end. And I yep. noticed you do that too. You don't stay in the same gut. Like, no, that's good. That's education. Oh, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, an artist who has made a really good killer track, man, play that track. Don't cut it short. All the way through to that's the like, end, that's baby. That's like listening to a track with killer vocals, but yet you're only listening to half the bars, and then then you're done. Yep, yep. Like, it's so much to music. It's so much to music. I mean, once you turn it on and just get lost in it, like literally, it's so many. You go to that end. The end never gets played in the clubs. It's like, dude. Oh. But yeah, sometimes awesome. the end. The way I do it, you know, there'll be there'll be like a this little chord hook or a little small snippet vocal hook and you just you can loop it and you yeah. know and affect it and totally blend it right out and right in you know the next track's coming in it sounds sweet it does it does so tell me this what do you love the most about dj i just feel like people having a good time you know creating creating the vibe of the room you know it, that's that's the biggest part of djing for me i I could care less about fame, money, any of that stuff. If I can just create a good time and make people feel the music instead of hearing the music, yeah. then I'm then I've done a great job. And you do a great job, Sam man. You from me to you, you definitely do. And I really appreciate you so 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 very much. And thank I'm you, going to you. do my best to get down there to get on the patio before the four patio series are over, okay? So don't be you, surprised patio, if I show up. The patio is live. All right, I'm going to we got, I'm gonna have to get, get a girl trip together. <laughs> yeah, you should. I'll Car work pool. on that. I'll work on that. I definitely work on it because I definitely want to come because I've heard so many good things about your place. And now that I know that you have- Man, I, I bring all, you know, when, when my night's going strong, I bring, you know, I bring all the Detroit cats down. You oh, know? I know. You know, I've Terrence Parker's been down, Ray Bone's been down, Al Lester been has been down, Mike Clark has been down. Um, I mean, so many, so many Detroit artists have been down playing at Wesley. I can't wait. So I gotta come and hang out before the patio is closed. So and then it's like you said, it's 40 minutes. I, yeah. I'll be the person to get there early though. And it ends at one o'clock. So even so you, you got, got plenty of time to jet on back home. Right, before you even get too sleepy. That is so true. All right. It sounds like a girl's trip in the making. So I'm going to work yes. on that. Okay. Give me a couple of weeks. I'm coming. I'm coming. All right. Coming. All right, Sam, man. You take care of yourself again. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank you, so you much, ever, Tina. ever, ever so much. So listen, Ty Parent Sam, man. Find him on Facebook. Find him on YouTube. Find him on wherever you can find him. Google his name. He will be worth, worth the trip. All right. This is T Carlita for the In My House Techno Music Show. Until next time, we are out. But Thank before, you, Tina. when we get out, I want you to hear some more of this guy's mix. He just lays it down nice. All right, guys. You are In My House, hosted by T. Carlita, where the true stories are told and great music is played.
just allowed to host any more watch parties come April 15th. Yet another negative. In My House, hosted by T. Carlina, where the true stories are told and great music is played.